Okay, so there's been a lot of confusion on how to uh, compile MS-DOS 4, so let's try to go through it. So the first thing you're going to need is, of course, the source code. Uh, I'm going to use the one from uh, Microsoft, just to show that this does work. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that to my clipboard. Come back to here. So use the Windows subsystem for Linux. So git clone and the directory. And this will take a few seconds. A few more seconds. Because um, all the PDFs and stuff have to be downloaded. It's like uh, 125 uh, megabytes. So the problem all stems from the fact that the DOS source codes are not plain text. They have special characters in them. And this really translates into all kinds of problems. Ah, so when you go from DOS to Unix, it creates problems. But then when you have special characters, uh, Git gets confused. So it creates even more problems. All right, so we got the source code. So version 4, there's a source directory. So this is what we want here. So one of the tools I use to get around this is um, zip and unzip, which are like 32 or 64-bit versions of the 64-bit uh, program. So I'm going to go ahead and make a uh, source.zip of source. So this just basically PK zips the whole thing up. And this should only take a few moments. Okay, because we're going to go ahead and build this thing from DOSBox. Uh, so let's see if I get my source.zip, it should be here. Oh, it's in the temp directory, right? Temp source.zip. So yeah, six megabytes. So now I'm going to go ahead and type in unzip. So just to show the secret weapon here is auto convert text files. If you treat everything, it's going to destroy a lot of stuff because the compilers and assemblers and um, system libraries are also binary, so don't do AA, but regular A will work. And then you can use L to force lowercase to make things happier on your PC side. So we're going to go ahead and go unzip minus A minus LL temp source.zip, and this will unzip our uh, source code. So you'll see the libraries are binary, text files are text files. Assembly is here, but here's where if we're going to run into problems. See this USA.txt? See, it thinks it's binary because it's got special characters. But because they've been through Git and then Unix conversion, they're all screwed up. So they're going to cause problems on the build. All right, so let's go ahead and fire up DOSBox. I'm using a plain DOSBox. There's nothing special about this. Uh, let's see. I should have set my path with a DOS5 tool, so I should have stuff like edit. So first we're going to edit the set env.bat. All right, so my drive is actually C. And the C compiler directories are kind of wrong. You need to put in BLD for the library and here for the include files. And then by default, it destroys your path, which is very annoying. So this will put my path ahead of DOS 4's. Alright, so that saves the config there. So I run set env, and now we can just run nmake, and it will start building. Alright, first problem, line too long. So this is the problem I'm talking about with the conversion. So we go edit, get msg.asm, and as we page through here, we will see the problem up. I guess I should have taken note of what line number. There we go. So this is the corruption right here. These three characters represent some special character. Don't know what it is. Doesn't matter. I replace it with a dash. So we change all. Change completed. Now we can go save, exit, and kick off the build again. All right, Mapper is the uh, family mode to uh, OS2. This is kind of neat. If you go edit speed. See, CP DOS, that's back when um, OS2 was uh, protected mode DOS. And family mode maps the OS2 uh, 
base APIs onto a DOS function. So really cool stuff. There's all kinds of gems hidden in this. So we go back, we run make again, and it'll be a matter of time before we hit the same problem. Just give it a minute. I guess I can up my cycle, see if that helps. Um, I've built this on a real 386. It takes 70 minutes. It is not, uh, it's not fast. <laughs> but it does work. Oh, I guess I should mention that um, because this is cloned from Microsoft, it does have the, uh, the boot bug. Um, you know what? It might be a good idea to uh, fix that. So while that's compiling, let me uh, pull up the fix. I remember it's on um, io.sys or the uh, BIOS part on how it handles uh, loading the rest of itself from disk. It, um, it stack explodes. Okay, I got the fix now. All right, so this just keeps going. We're into the tools. That was backup. Now we're compiling fdisk. Some of it's C, some of it's, most of it's assembly. Oh, I guess for fun in the background, I can... Uh... I also have a version of the tree that builds on regular Windows natively. And I have to merge the clean make files in here so that way you can clean up the uh, compiled work once it's done. Because, yeah, by default, there's no way to clean the source code. And I know that's going to run into problems with people because they're going to have half built stuff that has the incorrect text handling, and it's just, ah, oh, what a nightmare. All right, so we're almost done the device drivers. All right, select. Here we go. Boom, next problem. So select is the annoying setup program. You can skip this thing. But for the sake of being complete, we're going to go ahead and edit. Select2.asm. And here we go right here. So you can see right here, there's our special characters again. So I'm going to edit. I'll search change. Change that to a dash. Change all. Change complete. File exit. Now it's also important that I'm using MS DOS Edit from version 5 because it handles the text conversion just fine. It just works. Um, this might be a good time to also edit the USA info because this is the other file that has so many problems with this. So we just search, change these three characters, change them all. So that's three text files we've edited so far. And again, select, you don't even need it. This is the uh, MS-DOS 4 setup program, the one that wants you to make copies of the disks. And Ah, oh, it's just so annoying. What if I just want to use it? Oh, I mean, I can get the intentions because back then disks were fragile and things used to fail all the time, but... Oh, I just really dislike the uh, DOS 4 setup program. Okay, so yeah, that's the part here, the ASCII to help thing, that's where it would freak out on the USA.com. Alright, we go back, run make again. Now we're going to build the uh, memory device drivers. And there we go, that's it. We've just compiled DOS4. So let's make a bin directory. There's a batch file here, cpy. It will copy out all the needed stuff into a bin directory. There slash y, there we go. There's our compiled MS-DOS. It was literally that simple. Um, three text files. <laughs> I don't know why so many people struggle. Uh, I've tried to make it as clear as possible, but here, this is, you know, w get it for, I don't know, git cloned from Microsoft's git repo. 
Use zip unzip to do 98% of the magic, fix three files, and yeah, there, I've got DOS. Uh, now to boot it, that's where the fun comes in. Uh, DOS source. And so there's a need of a few of this. So. I'm going to try to uh, create a, uh, a virtual machine using a QEMU to boot this up. Uh, I used DOS 5 just because it boots from hard drive. Oh, right, the boot from hard drive, we should fix that. Because that's one of the, the big flaws about DOS 4 is it didn't boot from hard drive. So if you go into BIOS, we edit mslow.asm. So this would make it 4, but you know. It, Technically, we're at parity. This is the way DOS was. If, yeah. If you had any special type of a card, like a, my PS2 won't boot DOS 4. <laughs> you know, it's real IBM equipment, and it doesn't work. But the 64-byte stack is not enough. If you put in 256, it crashes because it's too big. 128 is just the right size. So if we run nmake, it'll pick up the change. And then CPY bin, and that will just recopy everything. Yeah, so now we have a version of DOS 4 that um, can boot to uh, boot off hard drive. Um, let's see. So if I go unzip, I need like a, a bootable disk. This is the, the chicken and egg. You need a DOS to build a DOS. Uh, so find MS DOS wherever you get your DOS. Yeah, that's last five. That's good enough. So QMU six. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, HDA. QMD. Uh, I thought I made a PMDK. Oh, I put it on the root of the hard drive, didn't I? So I tried to show something special and I screw it all up. Oh, because you know it's this is the, uh, <laughs> the Windows subsystem for Linux, so the tabs are gonna be different. So yeah, whatever, it's fine. So this FDA that's five. Just go one. Hang on, let's move this a little bit more in here. So we should see this. We can just exit this. I want to F this, reboot, yeah, that's going to crash because QEMU only selects one thing to boot. Install uh, the hard drive, yeah, we don't need DOS shell. Format the partition. I don't think we really need the entire thing of DOS, but whatever. Change it to floppy. This two. So we basically need to be able to format a floppy, and then we can um, we can boot back. All right. So let's move that. So now we can go ahead and I'm gonna have to make it a floppy. Disk file and then for HDB it was like alright colon rewrite colon bin I believe. Uh, so now we need a blank image so uh, give us a blank image. Alright. So now if we go to D drive we should have our DOS. Great. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and format A drive. No system, no nothing, just plain. And we're going to copy io.sys to A. We're going to copy ms.sys to A. And we're going to copy command.com to A. Okay. 
Now we can boot A. And there, so now we've just booted the DOS 4 that we've uh, built. But our uh, floppy drive looks kind of terrible. So we're going to go to the D drive where we've got our commands and we're going to go ahead and format A colon slash S. Uh, we'll call this one DOS box. <laughs> Why not? Format another? Nah, it's okay. Now, part of the problem for copying everything there is it's going to have problems with the io.sys being system. So let's make a temp directory. We're going to copy everything from the D drive, which is mapped to our binary. Del io.sys. Del sys and copy everything to A. Okay, so now we can go ahead and close that and just boot up one more time. So we're running our uh, built MS-DOS, we can run fdisk, we can delete our MS-DOS 5 partition because why not? Virtual machines are cheap and I'm just going to exit so we can reboot. Run fdisk again, create a primary partition, yes please. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Active, 100% of the disk. Reboot again. And format C colon. Oops, no. I want to format C colon with the S so it's bootable. And then we're going to make a C DOS directory and then copy everything to C colon slash DOS. If you knew how to use select, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, it's very annoying. I guess it hangs. Eh, whatever, we don't need it. So now I can boot from the hard drive. And that was part of the, uh, the big thing about fixing uh, the MS load part because yeah, by default this will not work. So this is what's great about having the source. You can finally fix a super annoying bug from back in the day. Um, yeah, so we're basically done. Uh, you know, I haven't set up any auto exec about that. Yeah, see? We're booted from the hard drive. And we're up and running. So <sighs> that concludes it, you know, like everything else. Like when you I guess know what to do, it's not too hard. But um Yeah, I just feel bad for everyone else having problems. I've tried to help. Um I'll upload the um this built directory in the source and the uh, the floppy image I just created onto um, I guess archive.org archive.org probably works better so let me go do that I'll upload it and I'll upload this video so hope that helps everyone <laughs>